What's up backgammon fans, this is Mark Olsen. In this video I'm gonna share my technique of counting the pips. So pip counting is a difficult topic. It's something that most players, they don't like to count the pips. It's, it's kind of a fearful, fearful thing and it can be a little bit of a pain in the brain <laughs> to, to count the pips, but uh, I'm here to give you guys some techniques. I'm gonna share what techniques I use and maybe it will make your life a little bit easier over the board uh, using some of these techniques. So, what am I doing when I count the pips? Well, for the most part, I'm mostly interested in the pip uh, difference, not so much the absolute pip count of both players. What usually matters is what's the difference in pips here? Am I, is it an even raise? Is, am I down? Am I ahead? And I just need that information in order to determine my strategy over the board. So I have a, a, a much faster technique for just counting differences rather than counting the absolute uh, pip count. So let me share some of the techniques. Okay, so here we have the board here. So the, what I'm trying to achieve is to get a position where my checkers and my opponent's checkers are completely symmetric. So for instance, here we have the opening position. And this is a completely symmetric position because you're gonna, uh, I have two checkers, he has two checkers. Like all the checkers are completely symmetric opposed each other. But what if, I, what if I had a position that was like this? Now it's not completely symmetric, but it's almost symmetric because if I just mentally shift these two checkers back to the six point, then we achieve symmetry. So this position here is quite fast to count the pip differences. I'm ahead two pips because if I just take these two checkers, of course I can't sit here and move checkers on the board, but I can do it mentally. If I take these two checkers and shift them back to the six point, we have achieved symmetry. And how many pips did I move? Two pips. I moved the two pips backwards, which means I must be up two pips in this position. So that's the basic idea, uh, trying to achieve symmetry. And uh, if, we, if we can take it like one variable at a time here, again, try to look at the back uh, angers for both players here. What if I had an anger here and he had an anger down on the ace point? Well, now, these checkers here, I have to move my checkers eight pips backwards in order to achieve symmetry, which means that I must be leading eight pips when it comes to the back checkers. Um, and this is basically the technique I use. Of course, it gets more complicated over the board when you have like a, a more complicated position, but it's basically just the same. So let me try to give you a little bit more uh, complicated position and I will try to think out loud how I would count the pips. Okay, so let's see. Let's just make it a little bit more difficult here. Um, what about something, something like, something like this? We have this position here. I'm considering whether I should double or not because now I made the advanced anchor. I have both golden points. My opponent is still getting trapped all the way down here. Maybe I should double, but I know that this depends on the race because if I'm not really ahead in the race, then probably I probably shouldn't double. So here I. Rather than counting the absolute pip count of both players, which I could, it just takes longer, I just count the differences. So what would I do here? Okay, so first I would look at the back checkers and try to achieve symmetry with the back checkers. So I know I'm ahead eight pips with the back checkers here when you compare these two uh, checkers, uh, these checkers here. Okay, what about these, the, the, the front position here in my inner board? Well, I'm ahead by another two pips because if I do this, then I have symmetry. So that's another two pips. So that's eight plus two, that's 10 pips in my favor. What about here? Okay, now I have to move two pips forward to achieve symmetry here. So I have to deduct two pips from my lead of 10. So that now I'm up, now I'm up eight pips and now I go over, over here. And then here I can simply just mentally shift these checkers up here and then I have symmetry. So that would be four pips backwards, which means I would go from eight to 12 pips ahead. And now that we counted the pips and we're, we know that we're up 12 pips, I feel confident that I can double this position because I'm leading in the priming game and I'm also leading 12 pips in the race. I don't have any blitz value here, but two out of three plus a little bit of threats, that should be enough to, to double here. So yeah, we can double this position. And of course our opponent still has a take here, uh, but maybe he doesn't know that we're giving him a decision. Um, so the counting differences is a very useful technique for counting the, the race quick when you just need to know, am I up, am I down, is it evenish? Uh, when strategy depends on it, this is what I do. And of course, I know that uh, this is a rather simple position still. So here we have complicated the position a little bit. 
you can, as you can see, uh, it's not as symmetric as it was in the previous position here. Uh, but nevertheless, it's still the same technique that I'm going to use uh, to count the, the pip differences here. So, so let's see how we go about it. First, I'm trying to achieve symmetry in my front position here. Okay, so what do we do? We take these two checkers and shift them up here. So that would be four pips times two. So I'm ahead eight pips because I'm, these pips are leading over these pips, uh, these checkers. So I'm up eight pips with these ones. Then I have take these ones out here. So that would be six more pips in my favor. So now I'm up eight plus six, that's 14. Then I need to shift these ones over here. So now I'm up 12 because that's two pips less. Okay, then we achieve symmetry here in the front position. Now we scan over the board here and we have to achieve symmetry in the next quadrant, which would be the outer board here. Uh, and what I need to do now is to take these two checkers and shift them out here to the midpoint. Notice that I didn't take these two. That's because I'm already seeing that we have an anchor here that I just have to do this at the end. So I'm taking these two checkers and putting them out on the midpoint to achieve symmetry out here. So that would be 10 pips and 11 pips. So that's 21 pips. I was up 12 minus 21. That is, that's uh, nine pips down. Now I'm nine pips down and now I just need to achieve symmetry in the last quadrant over here, which I need to move the, my anchor, four, these two checkers, two pips back, so that's four pips. So down nine plus four, so I'm down five pips. As you can see, it took a little bit longer, but it still wasn't all that complicated. You have to keep track of whether I Am, am I leading when, with these checkers or am I behind with these checkers? And make sure that you get the sign right, whether it, you, you add or subtract. That's the only little thing. But uh, after you practice this technique maybe 20 or 30 times, it starts to get uh, easier. And after you've done it 100 or 200 times, then you're probably going to be an expert in uh, counting uh, pip differences. So that's my technique, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and it, you found it useful. And uh, maybe you can use these techniques over the board. You need to, uh, to practice a little bit. Uh, you set up some positions and start doing it by yourself. You need to do it 10, 20 times at least. Um, yeah, that's it. See you next video. Thanks for watching this video. Did you smash that like button? Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to not miss out on future videos. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and my personal Instagram, margolson 10 And see you in the next video.